the brown recluse, possibly the most feared spider in North America. When you hear its name, you probably picture gruesome images of rotting flesh, as its venom is reported to rot you away. Everyone seems to have a horrifying brown recluse story, but what if I told you that everything you thought you knew about the brown recluse was wrong? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and my mission is to uncover the secrets of the natural world. Here in Texas, I'm working with Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife to track down some of North America's most iconic invertebrates, and while exploring a patch of woods, we came across one of the most notorious spiders in the world. Got him? Yeah. Oh, Check yeah. Check that out. That's a good size recluse. Oh, wow. He is huge. Yeah, woof. That's a big female. She is huge. Yeah, wow, so. It's okay. We're abducting you. We're aliens. <laughs> Look at her. That's insane. Tuck this back in there, so. Ruin all this precious brown recluse real estate. That is no small spider, there, folks. What I've got right here is a brown recluse spider. Now, this might be the most feared spider in the U.S. and North America, even more so than the black widow. Even though we, we oftentimes think of the black widow as being deadlier, I think these are feared because you associate these with those black rotting holes in your arm, these uh, nasty necrotic reactions. But there's a lot of stuff that you think you know about the recluse that isn't entirely true. You know, we think of these spiders as being extremely toxic, extremely necrotic, but at the end of the day, jury's still out on whether or not this is something that can actually severely affect you. You know, these spiders are pretty seriously venomous. They are medically significant, but bottom line is, there's actually no confirmed deaths from this spider. I know after I say that, people are gonna flock to the comments and be like, Spencer, my uncle's cousin's friend's wife was killed by a brown recluse. I can assure you that that person was not killed by a brown recluse. In fact, a lot of these really severe bites have uh, most likely been staph infections or serious infections that happened maybe from a spider bite, maybe not. But the actual venom is not what's causing that. What happens if a brown recluse actually bites you? Let's ask Gage, Jack's resident toxicologist. Um, so Loxoceles uh, reclusa is one of the two medically significant um, genera of spiders in the United States. Um, with Loxoceles envenomations, almost always they're going to be medically insignificant. You know, they're going to be itchy, uh, maybe red, um, but it the area will heal within two weeks tops. Um, there is, however, one particular enzyme uh, called sphingomyelinase D, uh, which causes uh, the destruction of red blood cells. Uh, so the lysing of these cells uh, causes, you know, all sorts of tissue damage and um, uh, can lead to systemic effects. But you also have to think about the activity of this enzyme and the venom yield. So it's a very, very small yield and the enzyme itself, uh, you see a lower activity level in reclusa than you would in like Loxoceles lata, which is the Chilean reclusa, so some of the more dangerous uh, species in the genus. So really, even though they've got that toxin in there, um, it's generally only going to result in pretty mild symptoms uh, because of that venom yield and the activity of that toxin. This spider's venom aside, is this something that actually wants to bite you? So, you, you know, we, we, we hear about all these people being afraid of, of brown recluse spiders, but do they actually want to bite you? All right. All right, there. There is a brown recluse on my bare hand. Might be asking Spencer, are you nervous? And I mean, I'll be honest, it's, it's always a different experience having a medically significant spider in your hand. You're a bit more focused. You gotta make sure you can see where the animal is at all times. And this is definitely not something I'd recommend that anybody just go out and do. But as you can see right here, honestly, she's a lot quicker to jump off than do anything else. And that's because one, I am way too big to be prey. You know, a lot of people, they get so worked up about venomous snakes and spiders, but you know, I am way too big for this spider to really want to try and pick a fight with, right? In a 1v1, you know, I could take one finger and just squish the spider. I'm not gonna do that because I love these little animals, they're awesome. It, it's, it's ridiculous to think about 
these spiders wanting to pick a fight with us. That's a suicide mission for the spider. She can tell she's sitting on a much larger animal and you know, she's not comfortable with this, but as you can see right here, you know, she is not making any moves to attack me. And even if she did, she'd be defending herself. We think of these venomous spiders as like, you know, aggressive or mean or something. And I won't, I won't deny, you know, invertebrates that are this small with such toxic venom. I mean, this one doesn't have that toxic venom, but like invertebrates that are this small with potent venom, you know, that's a force of nature. That's kind of impressive and incredible to think about. That something so small and delicate has such a cool chemical power stored within it. But you know, this is not something that is going to go out and use it. See that venom, you know, the, the spider has to expend energy to produce that venom. And that venom is a valuable resource that she needs to hunt little invertebrates in this environment. It's not designed to kill humans. It just happens to have a couple components that are not so great for our physiology. This spider doesn't want to have to use it, but if you, uh, if you do lay a hand on the spider, it will defend itself if necessary. A bite's gonna happen when you're sticking your hand into its personal space and you accidentally squish it a little bit. It'll give you a little pinch and release with those fangs, inject some venom, tell you to back off. And if you don't back off in time, she might pinch a little bit deeper and pump a little bit more venom in you. And that is where you start to get some nasty reactions in uh, even confirmed brown recluse bites. But generally speaking, just like any other spider, they're gonna sit there and not mess with you if you don't mess with them. The brown recluse is one of the most misunderstood arthropods on the planet, but there are loads more creepy crawlies with questionable reputations. Another common predator of the bug world is the assassin bug, and many of these are mistaken for their lethal cousin, the disease-spreading kissing bug. If you wanna learn about that nightmarish creature, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.